So today we're back with another video on Wrexham AFC and as you can imagine we're talking about transfer news regarding the club. It's been an interesting past 12 hours as there's been many talks of a certain player signing for the club. Before we get started in today's video I've said it before and I'll say it again if you're looking for the best Wrexham AFC content here on the YouTube app then make sure to click the red subscribe button with the notification bell turned on so you get notified whenever I upload a new video on Wrexham AFC. I've said we're going for 20,000 subscribers before the start of the year, but I think that's a step too far. If we could hit 19K with 600 away, that would be absolutely incredible. So if you could help me out now and click the red subscribe button, that would be massively appreciated. And yeah, let's get talking transfer news. So in the last 12 hours, a big name has been linked with a move to the racecourse ground, but there's got to be a few questions asked about this whole situation. So you may have seen already last night, the latest player to be linked with a move to the club is Cal Naismith from Bristol City who is the player that is rumoured to be our first summer signing. The news quickly spread across social media last night that Wrexham have got some firm interest in the Bristol City player. So a bit about Cal Naismith, as I've already said, he plays his football for Bristol City. He's 31 years of age. He plays his football in the Championship as he has done for the past three seasons. He's a very versatile defensive player, being able to play at centre-back, centre midfield, and he's described by Bristol City fans as playing his best when he's playing in that holding defensive midfielder role. This obviously means that he's a very effective player in possession and can be utilised in multiple different positions. Now, before joining Bristol City of summer 2022, Cal Naismith was playing his football for Luton Town, who are now in the Premier League. He did play a big role in their route to the playoff semi-finals in the Championship, where he did play 45 times, making 11 goal contributions, 3 goals and 8 assists. In that same season where he did reach the playoff semi-finals, Naismith actually won Luton Town's Player Player of the Season, he won Luton Town's Player of the Year award, and he won their best goal of the season with his goal in injury time against Bournemouth. So it's clear to see that this would be an unbelievable signing if we did pull it off. And to put it into perspective, when Naismith achieved getting to the playoff semi-finals, winning their play of the year, players play of the year, this was the same season that Wrexham went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Stockport County for the National League title. So we're talking not even that long ago. I'd maybe have a few questions, maybe if it was five, six years ago, but he's fresh off achieving a playoff semi-final spot with Luton Town and then getting that move to Bristol City where he's had a good season, but it's definitely been hamstrung with injuries. Why should Wrexham AFC sign Cal Naismith from Bristol City now? I think you all know the main factor is the fact that Cal Naismith is a very versatile player. With him being able to play at centre defensive midfielder and at the back, this would be a very intelligent piece of business from Phil Parkinson and his team because obviously we saw last season the injuries that we did sustain to our back line and having that option of playing Cal Naismith at centre back, say if we did get an injury and then if we got an injury to the centre defensive midfielders, he would easily be able to slot in there and do a good job. And like I said, with the injuries that we did sustain to our back line last season, I would not be surprised in the slightest if our main priority was to get a defensive player. Another factor would obviously be Naismith's experience that he does have in the English Football League. Over 320 appearances in the EFL, 153 of those coming in the Championship for the likes of Luton Town, Bristol City, Wigan Athletic. It's clear that he carries a mass amount of experience and bringing that to our midfield slash defence would be absolutely vital. You know, we're obviously going for that promotion in our first season back and adding Nade Smith to this squad would, like I said, would be absolutely key. We've seen the impact that Ben Foster has had on the dressing room and to the squad in the final eight games of last season. Getting Naismith's experience, obviously, being in the playoff, he's been in these big game situations in the past, in the higher leagues as well. Bringing him into the squad for 46 games across the board would be key, and I think he would add a massive amount of experience and quality to that team. And obviously, at the moment, we only have two players that can really play in that defensive midfielder role, which obviously are Tom O'Connor and Luke Young. So 
But obviously, bringing Naismith into this side would be a good bolster for our midfield. Like we said, he can play in that centre defensive midfielder role with quality. That's where he's played in the past. And then obviously, through the years, he has dropped down to that centre back role. So he's no stranger to playing in different positions. Now we're going to be discussing if there is any downsides to this possible transfer. And I think the main one that will stand out to everyone watching this will be the fact that he did suffer two injuries in the championship campaign for Bristol City last year, which has obviously limited his game time massively, only making 25 appearances out of a possible 46. Now, for me, I don't think this is something we should really be concerned about because it's obviously just been a massively unfortunate season for him. If you look at his stats from previous years, take for example Luton Town the season before, playing 45 games across the board. It shows that he hasn't got a history of suffering injuries. And having said all this about injuries, he did talk to BBC Radio Bristol a couple of weeks ago and he said he is fit and he is determined to head into the new season in the best shape of his life. So I think that's the only possible downside of this potential deal that as he gets older, Naismith, is he going to be prone to suffering more injuries? That's the only thing we've got to consider. But if he said he's in the best shape of his life, then... I don't think that's something we should be really looking at. You may remember at the start of this video, I said there's got to be questions asked about this possible transfer, and there is because there's been a lot going on on social media, especially Twitter last night, of just a bit of drama going on with this potential deal and whether there's any truth behind these rumours. So since the rumours did break out last night, they broke out from a Wrexham journalist. They were responded to by a Bristol Live journalist who said there is absolutely nothing in the Cal Naismith to Wrexham deal. But like I said, a few sources closely related to Wrexham are saying that there's a solid interest and that a deal could definitely happen. Now, the only thing I can think of on the Bristol City journalist end of things is the fact that he may not want any information to go out to the public, but it's an odd situation and someone's going to come out of this with egg on their face. A lot of people may be put off by this possible rumour because the fact that Naismith is out travelling with Bristol City on tour in Austria, but this would have no possible impact on him potentially signing for Wrexham. If his agent is currently based in the UK or if he's currently in the UK at the minute, then he can go and if there's an agreement between the player, the agent and the club, the agent can get all the paperwork signed and get the deal across the line. Which, like I said, it can be done by his agent who is most likely in the country at this time I'm assuming he's an agent for many other players so it's a busy time for him and he could definitely get the deal done quickly so that leads me on to the question who do you believe do you believe that there's any truth behind this rumor or do you believe that the Bristol City journalist is telling the truth and that there is absolutely nothing in this potential transfer honestly I'm gonna be honest I do not have a clue sometimes I would like to say I have a knowledge of what is going to happen but at this moment in time I do not have a clue in the world but what I would say is this this would be an incredible chance for it. and with him being on a rumoured £15,000 a week and with a current market value of £1 million we would have to open our wallets and spend big on Naismith. So yeah I mean like I said I'm absolutely stumped on this potential deal it's a big name to make a rumour out of it's a bit strange if someone has come out with this rumours and obviously it's very confusing people saying on the Wrexham end who are very highly respected journalists saying that the deal's close to happening but then you've got the Bristol City journalist saying that there is absolutely nothing in it. I mean it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm going to keep my eye on it and I'll keep you updated and but yeah, I'm sure you'll know if Cal Naismith does decide to sign for Wrexham. That's it for the signing part of the video but you may have seen on my community post a couple of weeks ago I did ask for questions in the comment section of that post i've got four in front of me that i'm going to be answering don't worry i'll be making a separate video soon answering all the questions now the first question is what do the people of wrexham think of the stadium name change now on my behalf i'm going to speak on this and say that i can speak on behalf of a lot of wrexham fans and say it's great for the club. I mean, some people may expect us to be angry that obviously the race course ground has been called it for over 150 years, but I think it's a great money move for the club because obviously people aren't going to go out of their way to call it the Stoke Cold Brew Stadium. It will always be known as the race course ground. And it's like I said, it's a great way and it's a great pathway for more income to come into the club. It's great to collaborate with these new upcoming and unique brands. So yeah, I think all round, it's a great move for the club and not one that we're that affected by. Obviously, it's a very funny name, 
But yeah, we'll always call it the racehorse ground and it's a great sponsorship move for the club. The next question is, realistically, where do you think we will finish next season? Now, Phil Parkinson was on a podcast the other day and he spoke upon this situation and I totally agree with him on this. Obviously, the bookies see us as favourites at the minute for the League 2 title, but he can't really comment on that until a few weeks' time when he's got a few new players into the club. Obviously, at the minute, I believe we've got one of the best squads in the league. We're very lucky to have the squad that we do it's full of quality and like Parkinson said with two or three more new signings through the door I think we can definitely compete for the title and I think automatic promotion to League One is 100% possible because obviously don't forget there is three automatic promotion spots so yeah there's a high chance of us getting promoted this year a couple more signings and we could be well on our way touch wood I'm not jinxing anything yet but yeah, our chances this season are very high. The next question is, can you tell us about the teams we'll be facing now and are there any interesting rivalries or histories with the club? Obviously, distance-wise, we've got rivalries with the likes of Tranmere, Crew Alexander and obviously for previous years when we've gone in the title race, we're obviously going to have those really intense rivalries. Not rivalries probably isn't the right word to say, but the likes of Stockport County, Notts County as well. Teams that we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with with the title and wanted to beat us to the title. Obviously, we're always going to be having that sort of crunch match against them and those games hold a lot of quality in them and... Yeah, they're always good games. So the likes of Tranmere, Crew Alexander, Stockport for our rivalries this season. And obviously you can't forget our Welsh neighbours, Newport County. It's been a while since we have played a league game against the Welsh club. But yeah, there's history between us. They beat us in the playoff final 10 years ago to get to the EFL. But yeah, we're after revenge. They beat us in the FA Cup as well. I'm sure this season will be a completely different result. We have a bit of history with them. And yeah, it would be nice to get one over them after the pain they've made us suffer in the past. Someone has asked, what are my goals for this season on YouTube? I think it's fairly simple to say, and I think everyone knows it at home. It's to hit 20,000 subscribers, and when that does come, I'll be very happy. What time in the season will it come? I don't have a clue. We're currently 1,600 off, but... After we hit 20,000, we obviously have to look at the likes of 30,000 and I think that's definitely possible this year. Obviously, we're playing teams that are more well-known. There's going to be more exposure to Wrexham Football Club with the second series of Welcome to Wrexham coming out. So hopefully that brings more new fans to the club and hopefully more new fans looking for Wrexham content on YouTube and hopefully they'll stumble across this channel. But by the end of the Sky Bet League 2-23-24 season, I would like to hit... 30,000. I'm going to say it. I never thought these words would come out of my mouth. The lockdown. I think I hit 1,000 subscribers in lockdown. And then after that, it took me a while to get going. But as soon as I started doing the Wrexham videos, that's when it took off. But saying that I want to hit 30,000 subscribers and that being possible is just absolutely mind-blowing to me and it's all thanks to you at home that continue to watch these videos i cannot thank you enough for the support you've shown me so yeah 30,000 subscribers is 100 percent the goal for this year is it possible yes will i work extra hard to hit that goal yes is there going to be amazing content to come this season yes i actually cannot wait what a milestone it is for the Wrexham football club obviously reaching the football league for the first time in god knows how many years but yeah this season is going to be big for the channel so like i said get down there subscribe put the notification bell on so you're up to date and get notified whenever i upload a new video because this season is going to be special so if you did enjoy today's video make sure to drop a like dropping a like definitely helps the videos get boosted out to more people so i mean a thousand likes is that possible i don't know but yeah let's see if we could hit a thousand likes and everyone watching this make sure to drop a like so we can get it boosted into more people's recommendation boxes and i'll see you in another video up the town fingers crossed we can pull off this amazing signing of cal naismith until then i'll see you in the next video